Hello and welcome to the Monty Hall Problem Revisited. I made a previous video, I got a little long-winded, so I decided to uh, regroup my thoughts and make a new video. For those of you that are brand new to the Monty Hall Problem, um, I'll give you a quick summary. You're on a game show and you're faced with three doors. Two of the doors have a goat behind them. One of the doors has something like a luxury automobile. The, uh, the host shuts all the doors, shuffles the things around, and asks you to select one of the three doors. After you select the door, uh, he then reveals one of the goats, um, leaving you now with just two doors. Then he gives you the choice. Would you like to stay or switch your choice? Now, here's where the paradox comes in. Most people look at two doors. One has a car, one has a goat, and figure the odds to be an even 50-50. And that changing or switching their choice is not going to improve their odds. Um, I'm going to explain, actually, how switching, your, switching from your original uh, choice will actually double your chances of winning that automobile. There are two ways in which we can break this down. One is assuming that we always switch, or two, that we always stay. We're not going to look too far into always staying, because always staying is going to mean that each time that you make a choice, you're one and three to pick a car, and two and three to win a goat. If we always stay, that's what your odds are going to be each and every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down uh, the switching portion of it and show why switching will actually improve your chances. What we're going to do is, again, we're going to be faced with three doors. We're going to put the car behind door number one for each of these three scenarios so that they're equal and fair. It shows the possible outcomes from switching. So let's say the car is behind door number one and we pick door number one. Now the host, because he's going to reveal a goat, has to either show you door number two or door number three. So let's say he shows you one of the doors and you switch. Well this is bad for us because now from the beginning we picked the car and now we've swapped away from it. Now we want to go and that's bad juju. Okay, so we'll go to scenario B. Scenario B is the car is still behind door number one but now we pick door number two. Since the goat has to be revealed the host can only now show you door three. So when you switch you end up winning the car. And scenario three. Let's say we pick door number three, knowing that the car is in door number one. We pick door three. Now the host can only show you what's behind door number two. Once he shows you that, again, after being asked to switch or stay, and you switch, you switch, and guess what? You've won the car. So here's the actual breakdown. Scenario A, you, the car is in door one. You select door one. He reveals a goat you switch and you lose. Scenario two, the car is in door one, you pick door two, he shows door three, you switch and you win. Scenario C, the car isn't behind door number one, you pick door three, the host reveals door two and you switch and again win the car. So what, these, what this tells us is that two and three times in switching you win and one in three times you switch and you lose. Two and three versus a one in three is a double chance of winning. I thank you very much for watching the video and I hope this has shed some light onto the Monty Hall paradox.